So let's talk about today three specific problems that you can have when you're working with Angular and how you can think through solving these. So today we're talking about these three Angular tips. The first one we're going to talk about is, have any of you here used this technology, RxJS? All right, it's pretty cool, isn't it? And RxJS, it does a lot of things. Well, there's a couple different things along the way that you might run into when you're doing RxJS, and we'll look at how we can solve some of those challenges. The next one is state management. Uh, thanks to Brandon and Mike, Brandon Roberts, Mike Ryan, they did great work on this. We have a great NGRX state management tool that a lot of us use. There's some things along the way that can be challenging with this that you can overcome. We'll talk about how you can get through those. And then finally, cloud services. How do we take our app and deploy them to the cloud when we're done? And what do we really want to do? Because there's about 101 ways to get it to the cloud. What are our goals? Do we care about performance or scalability or security or anything like that? Do we care how much it costs? Do we make care if it's easy? So we're going to talk through these three different tips today. First, let's start off with ArxJS. One of the most common problems we run into is subscriptions. We would create our own observables, and we get all these subscriptions, but we have to make sure we manage these. Because what happens if you subscribe to something and you don't unsubscribe? Anybody? It's a leak. Second tip, we move along and related to RxJS, there's this thing called NGRx, which is built on the Redux pattern. And it helps us manage state in our applications. Now, let's take a look at NGRx data. So NGRx data has a store as well. Here's the module for the store. You'll notice the store code is the same in NGRx data as it was in NGRx. But here, the additional line you have is you also pull in this extension. NGRx data does not replace NGRx. It's an extension to it. You're building on top of NGRx. It's not a wrapper. You get every single feature of NGRx out of the box. In addition, you get a lot of this that just takes care of a lot of that CRUD opportunity for you. So the magic is behind this in the entity config. Let's look at that file. This is the second file here. Every new entity that you add will cost you a whopping one line of code. So for my third tip, I wanted to share something uh, that I really am passionate about. Scaling applications is important. Getting a single app up there is important too, but when you've got hundreds of users, thousands of users, millions or 10 millions of them, it's important to know how to scale your app and worry about redundancy and performance and security. Now, what's happening is VS Code is compiling in the Angular app, it's compiling the Functions app all locally, no internet connection on your machine, so you can run it here without hitting a cloud first. So you can even do this on an airplane. Building everything up, and when it's done, it's going to launch the browser, and here's the application, and notice the browser paused, and it says, paused in VS Code. It's about to get my list of heroes. Over here, on the left, there's my hero heroes component. On the right, there's my function. Actually, that's the wrong function. This is the one I wanted. We'll put it over here. So on the left is my Angular app. On the right is my, my function app. And notice the breakpoint on the right is unverified. The breakpoint on the left is hit, getting my heroes. That's Angular. I'm going to let it continue and watch what happens. Now it's breaking into the functions. So I'm debugging my Angular app and my functions app all in one call, in one computer, all locally on my machine. 